Hello, everyone, and welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. Uh, we are now 12 years old, uh, currently in the middle of pollen. Uh, last time, we went and did some exploring out beyond the walls, and while we were exploring, we came across a manticore a attacking Uncle Tonin and saved his life. Holy shit. I can't believe that happened. Yeah. Uh, and he proceeded to immediately step down as chief surveyor because he was super done with that. Um, and we, was replaced by Utopia. Replaced by Utopia, who was right there. Um, we continued through the year um, into uh, Glow. Uh, had a brief scare during Glow with while well, the colony was attacked. And unfortunately, it seems like something happened and Hal was killed during the attack. Um, potentially in the engineering lab. They said it needed to be de decontaminated or, or something. Um, but implying there was blood on the walls. Implying there was blood or, I don't know, an alien in there. I don't know. It was really bad. Anyway, our teacher has died, unfortunately. Um, and we also discovered, um, as we came into pollen here, that our dad is susceptible to the toxins in the pollen in the air, which causes a condition called the shimmer, mm -hmm. uh, which causes you to cough up shimmery glowing uh mucusy pus shit it's not great it's not um, a good sign i don't think it's good the Although, doctor says yeah, it's okay i was about to say she she seems to think that it doesn't cause permanent damage just that you need to be out of it that, for for a little while that feels dubious to me i don't know <laughs> I don't trust anything on this alien planet because we're on an alien planet. That um, is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but last time we said that we were either going to like rest up and restore some of our stress or we we're going to talk to uh, Tangent. And I think we're going to talk to Tangent yep. first. So let's do that. <clears throat> oh, it's me. <clears throat> I am narrating now. Um, your hollow palm pulses with a message from Tang. Hello, Roscoe. If you're not occupied, could I ask you for your assistance in the lab? Thank you in advance. Tangent. Sure. Let's help. Typical Tang. But her asking for help is something so rare that you can't help but head over right away. You find her hunched over a spectrometer making notes on a hollow screen. Oh, you're here. She says, blinking rapidly. She looks like she's been awake for days, wrinkled and a little shiny and with a wild-eyed look of someone who needs a cup of, of blep cough. A blep tea. I came as soon as I could. I just happened to be nearby, and how can I help? I came as soon as I could. Yeah. I am researching the shimmer, the respiratory illness some people report during pollen. Ooh. She says. That's me. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, I was thinking about that. <laughs> I'm loath to admit it, but I need your assistance. Well, uh, hey, we'll help you. It's fine. She takes four vials with swabs inside. She takes four vials with swabs inside and puts them into your hands. I need recent saliva samples from both you and your father. She says. There must be a reason why he's so susceptible to the shimmer and you're not. You share half of your genetic code with him. There must be some marker we can compare between the two samples. Then, she continues, pulling another vial from a rack of test tubes. Administer this to yourself. Wait three days and take a sample again. The test should be able to determine if anything in your body chemistry has changed. Okay. Tang looks at you very seriously, cutting through her bleary expression. There's something going on here, she whispers. Something really, really big. I've begun to realize this is about more than just curing a disease. She squeezes your hand so hard it almost hurts. Unlocking the secrets of the Shimmer, who it affects and why, it could lead to a greater understanding of all life on Vertumna. And knowledge. Knowledge is more than power, Roscoe. It's control. Are, Are you, you okay? You seem unhinged. Uh, okay, I'll do it. No way. I don't like being like, you seem unhinged. <laughs> I don't like saying that, but I also want to make sure that she's okay. Let's just say we'll do it. Yeah. We got helped tangent, shimmer gear. Ooh, okay. And, and friendship. Plus, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Tang says. I've been researching so hard, I think my eyes are going to fall out of my head. And for what? Well, for the end of a debilitating disease is a pretty good reason, but Tang just shakes her head and... Uh, shakes her head at herself before you can answer. We're at a big disadvantage here. She mutters. We're fighting blind. We need to understand this place if we're going to get it under con our control. I mean, I see. I can still what talk with Tang again. I'm going to talk yeah. with our dad just to see if we can do anything with that. Oh yeah. Nope. Your okay. dad. Yeah. How do we do that? Maybe we just talk it may to her just again. Automatically happen. Yeah. yeah. What's up, Tang? Okay. 
Tangent is storming around the quad in front of engineering, checking notes on her holopalm, gesturing and grunting in frustration. <sighs> this is the worst! What's the matter? I can't possibly... She says, her voice cracking. She seems too upset to even explain it. Professor Hal! She tries again. Hal. He was helping me with a physics chapter, and now he's... Oh. She throws her hands in the air, virtual holopalm screens flying everywhere. I can't understand this without him! This is impossible! She chokes out. Why did he have to die? Oh, I miss him too. Give Tang a hug. We're all gonna die eventually. Either I miss him too or give Tang a hug. I feel like she probably doesn't want a hug right now, but we could say we miss him too. I don't know. Maybe we should have... Maybe we should have hugged her. I don't know. Uh, Tang nods angrily. He was a good teacher. She says. He didn't deserve to... to die. I wish I could have done something to save him. You both go quiet for a few seconds. Eventually, Tang sighs. Well, we can't count on the adults to protect us, that's for sure. She says. We'll have to do it ourselves. Oh my god. You need so much engineering to, to hang out with her. Yeah. Okay. Tang nods, going back to her notes. Thank you. She mumbles. Um, we have enough oh. energy to do one more thing before we rest. We do. Want. Um, yeah. I'm, oh, I want to know about the shimmer thing, but I think you're right. Do it you might want to study be... biology or sure. engineering? Or... Maybe. I wonder if studying biology or engineering would help us learn more about the shimmer. I don't know. Maybe. Um, yeah, go to biology. Let's do it. You're not sure what to expect from life sciences class this soon after Professor Hal's death. He was the teacher back on the ship. Who could possibly replace him? You, play, you take your seat in the classroom. There's no teacher here yet. You and the other students wait, exchanging awkward glances as time passes. Eventually, Chief Engineer Instance breezes through the door. She's accompanied by Tang, who takes a seat beside you, barely giving you a second look. Life sciences? Instance snaps. Who can tell me what it is? She points at you. Roscoe, start us off on the correct answer, please. Uh, the what sciences? Uh, Biochem, medicine, ecology, geology. That's uh, the middle one. Uh, the study of life? <laughs> the middle one. You easily rattle off the subject names. Instance doesn't look pleased, but she doesn't look disappointed either. That's about as good as you ever get with from her, honestly, so you count that as a win. Get to work. Tangent stops you on the way to class. Roscoe, were you headed to life sciences? Good. I could use your help with something, actually. I'm working with Chief Engineer Instance in the bio lab. If you give me a hand with it, I'm sure she'll give you credit for class. Uh, of course I'll help. Yeah. Honestly? Tang admits Tang. We just need somebody to label the petri dishes and move them from the cooler to a different machine. A hot eye could do it. Oh, all right. Instance is, star is staring unfocused at her hollow eye as she processes the results of the scans. Tang goes and stands beside her, pulling up the scan on her own holopalm. Uh, they confer quietly while you wait. Sounds like they're studying the shimmer, the mysterious. Thank you. Yeah, the mysterious illness some colonists get during pollen every year, including your dad. Instance looks up at you as if just noticing your existence. Ah, oh, Roscoe, she says. We've been studying samples from some of the colonists who get sick during pollen, including your dad. Some of the stuff in his lungs. It's some kind of fungus. I think we. I could kind of glean that because, yeah, it seems like the mushroom things are kind of... I mean, there are a lot of mushrooms yeah, in the... Yes. They resemble a fungus, so uh, it's interesting that they don't just resemble it. They are a fungus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We think the shimmer is a form of reproduction. Tang explains. It's like a fungus trying to turn us into more fungus like it. That's really neat, actually. Uh, okay, now here's a theory. I have a theory here. Maybe that is like part of the fungus is like part of the assimilation or something like if all of the creatures here are breathing it in and like absorbing it they all kind of look a little plant like in ways a little bit, yeah yeah especially i mean especially the manticore did. especially yeah. the manticore yeah i'm wondering if that has anything to do with how they operate maybe as one like super organism or something it's possible uh, it wouldn't make sense for why some humans are affected by it and others aren't, but... Would or would not? Huh? Would you say? I don't know how that would explain why some are and some aren't, but that is no. an interesting idea. That's true. Yeah, I have no idea how it relates to, like, why some people get it and why some others don't. Um, 
Yeah, neat. Uh, more like ultra creepifying, and you sound like you like the fungus. I mean, it is neat. Okay. Uh, yeah. We got biology and shimmer cure. Ooh, we're getting close to the shimmer cure. Okay. You spend the rest of the week helping them study the illness. Mostly, this involves following instructions and doing, uh, doing as Tang loves to put it, jobs a hop I could do. Nothing beats hands-on experience, though. This would be easier if you had actual samples of the fungus. Instance remarks. Uh, they're working with some biological samples. A fancy word for snot. But according to them, the fungus is all mixed in with human cells. Instance has Instance has to spend a lot of time in, virt in vert space trying to disconnect the two in her models. Where could I find a sample? And how close are we to a cure? Um... Where can I find a sample? Our most useful reports have uh, been from foragers returning from the Valley of Vertigo. She tells you. Where the pollen is thick all year. That might be a good place to start. Okay. Okay. Well, we can't do that. We but... can't go there. <laughs> Interesting. Um, do we need to get 14? Yeah, there's no way to do a straight, so we're just gonna uh, do some dumb we're stuff. We're just gonna... It's fine. Do some addition. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do some dumb stuff. <laughs> okay, we're gonna really need to go take a nap. Yes. I think it's okay. officially nap time. Late. Pollen. Hopefully nothing happens to make us stressful. Ooh, the music. Oh. Okay. Um... Got very Dude, peppy. It did. Fanciful. Ooh, um, do we want to go to the crush or do we want to go to the wall? Want to see what the wall is? Yeah, let's go hang out on the let's wall. Let's go hang out on the wall. Why not? Might as well. Okay, relax on the walls. After the first attack on the colony, they added lookout towers to the walls. Now you have a place to hang out if you don't feel like working, at working, and because it's all the way up here, no adults are going to come ask you to run away, run any errands for them. On rainy days, you take shelter under the pavilions and listen to the pitter-patter of warm raindrops on the grass roof. You can do whatever you want. Ah, this is the life. The perfect pla uh, place to slack off. It's nice to help keep watch, and this is a good place to study. Are these all... G I mean, it doesn't matter which one we do, because it's still going to restore all of our stress, yeah. right? So, yes. Um, I guess we can keep watch, look out to the world. Yeah. We got perception. Ooh! Very oh, our perception's really high. Should probably do other things. <laughs> I realize sometimes you offer to fill in on lookout duty so someone else can grab a meal. Uh, maybe someday you'll be allowed to work full shifts as a lookout yourself, but you find out it's not as relaxing as you think. Oh, hey Roscoe, this pops as oh, that's, oh, that's you. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry, I just <laughs> you just dropped right in. <laughs> that was I'm so sorry. That's <laughs> okay. That was funny. It's all right. Um, uh, Dis pops his head up uh, a nearby ladder and looks surprised to see someone else here. Do you mind if I stay here too? Sure, there's plenty of room. Heck yeah, come sit beside me and ew, just keep your stink downward. Oh my gosh. Uh, the middle one. Heck yeah, come sit beside me. Oh. The two of you dangle your feet off the side and watch the valley below. Dis shuffles a little uncomfortably and doesn't say much. You wonder if this was his private spot to be alone before you discovered it. Well, I feel like that's our relationship with this is like taking over his personal. Yeah, shit. that's kind of um, true. Um, I'm gonna get rid of first. Get steps. rid of first steps. Yeah. That's fine. Cool. Yeah. Which, to be f clear, I think is good for this to, to have to somebody. have somebody that's yeah. yeah. We got a perk Ooh. because we got to see how our perception passed. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, cool. All collectibles glow. Awesome. Nice. Okay, cool. So, like, when there's items around, we'll, we'll have a little glowy thing around We'll see them. them a little better. Okay, that's cool. Like that. Oh! There we go. Uh, you carefully pick a yellow flower. Neat. All right, we are fully rested. I think we should up our empathy or our perception, or sorry, persuasion, creativity, any one of those. So, uh, maybe do humanities? We have a way to do empathy? Or do we want to keep doing engineering, or sorry, bio life sciences to learn more about shimmer? Maybe we will. I just don't remember if we have a way to do to up empathy. Give me a sec. Organizing perception, organizing persuasion. Um, if you go, hmm, maybe in here. I don't think so. This is Double just toughness. Dirt? No. Okay. How do you have empathy? I don't remember. <laughs> maybe if we keep doing humanities, we might unlock it. Oh, maybe. Yeah. So we could do creativity and persuasion. Uh, works for me. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. 
Uh, you're running late for humanities class. When you arrive, everyone is gathered in the beanbags around the room's big hollow projector. Ship's computer, Congruence, is displayed on it. She's giving today's lesson, reading an old book on of Earth poetry. Uh, I'm just imagining the the AI reading the poetry. <laughs> I mean, for, for all we know, she has a completely naturalistic voice. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I gave her like a slightly robotic-ish yeah. voice. Um, but yeah, you're totally right. Uh, you sit down next to Tang and nudge, uh, wait, and nudge her and motion, what's up with this? Tang frowns at you. Where have you, where have you been? She whispers. Ever the, prof uh, ever since Professor Hal died, Congruence has been teaching this class. And she frowns at everything in general. They said everyone else who might be qualified is too busy. And no, they didn't ask me. Huh. What does the computer know about poetry? I miss Professor Hal. Oh, okay. I miss Professor Hal. Yeah. You try to keep your voice down, but congruence literally has ears everywhere. I miss Professor Hal as well, she says, her monitor swinging over to you. He was a very special human. Wait, you... Wait, you ask out loud. Congruence can like people? Of course I can like people, she replies. There's humor in her, not a voice. I carried you inside me for 20 years, after all. How could I not get attached? Oh. oh congruence. Thanks, Congruence. I hope you don't die. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can live. Um, can we do We're going to do... One? Oh, wait a sec. We're going to do... Oh, that... <laughs> Oh, wait, this is... Okay. Here we go. Okay. Damn. All right. I probably could get away with not losing a kudo, but it doesn't matter. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. We got three stars. We yep. did amazing. It was so good. Extra creativity. It's time for the third annual Vertum Vertumnalia Festival. Woohoo! Woohoo! You gather with your family in the colony square. Everyone takes a seat as Governor Uticott approaches the stage. She folds her hands and serenely addresses the cloud. The, the cloud. The <laughs> crowd. Ah, <laughs> uh, look at this cloud up here. <laughs> I was like, thanks, thanks Governor Unicott. Yeah. What a pleasure to address you all today as your governor, she says, looking as pleased as she ever does. In under three years, we've built a colony of which we can truly be proud, of which we can be truly proud. While we've suffered hardships and losses, we remain standing, as always, looking toward the future we are building together. Let us use this Midsummer Festival as a time to reflect on our many blessings, Uticott continues. Fresh water, good food, healthy children, and a strong community. Uticott bows her head. But first... Let us remember Professor Halitosis. Oh, why is his name Halitosis? <laughs> oh, no. Unkind parents. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> Who guided our children and kept our engines running for so many years. Chief Engineer Instance will be filling in with help from our ship's AI, Congruence, until someone can take up the mantle that rested so easily on Hal's broad shoulders. Oh, I would like to formally recognize our youngest council member ever, Utopia, representing expeditions. Uticott gestures for Utopia and Uncle Tonin to join her on stage. Thank, uh, oh, I don't know who This saying. is still her. This is still her, yeah, okay. Thank you, Melatonin, for your years of service as head of expeditions. Tonin gives Utopia's shoulder a squeeze. Utopia's been ready for this since we landed. I'll be staying back to work the comms from- I think this is Tonin now. Oh, this the is The color didn't change, oh, unfortunately, okay. which is weird. <laughs> Utopia's been ready for this since we landed. I'll be staying back to work the comms from here. So I'm always on call. I'll, I'm always a call away if you need me. Nice. Um, Uticott invites the rest of the council to stand and be recognized among the crowd, including your mom, who huffs in annoyance. Um, when the applause dies down and the council sits, Utopia remains standing. Uh, actually, uh, on to Uticott, y'all mind if I make a quick announcement? Um, Uticott nods and Utopia clears her throat. 
Uh, I just wanted to say thanks to all. To, oh, I guess she has an, a little southern accent. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, all right, I can there do we that. Go. I just want to thank. I uh, say thanks to y'all uh, who are trusting me with this job. She says her voice, her clear voice ringing out over the crowd. A cheer rises from expeditions as she motions for them to quiet down. Uncle Tonin's left some big shoes to fill, and well, I- I'm gonna give it my best. Uh, we're fixing to get. Th- we're fixing to get to the bottom of what we're calling the shimmer. The sniffles folks have been getting during the pollen, uh, Utopia continues. Until we do, please keep on wearing your masks when the pollen is thick and let the doc know when you're under the weather. Uh, she bends down to hug the governor and as she leaves the stage. Thank you, Utopia, uh, Uticot says warmly. And thank you for the rest of the council for their service. Live music starts playing and Uticot smiles. And now it's time for games and feasting. The crowd disperses towards the feasting table, clearing the area of chairs so children's uh, so the children's competitions can be held. Which will you do this year? Bot triathlon, talent show, science fair. We can do it all. Oh, we've been like really deep in the science. Uh, science let's fair. Do science fair. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Tangent's project involves how the surveyor's gliders work. Something to do with the materials they're made from reacting with the magnetic field of the planet, combined with solar energy collected from their w- from the wings. You tune her out, only zoning back when Tang stumbles through one of the judge's technical questions. You catch her look of pained frustration as she realizes she doesn't know the answer. Uh, the judges turn to you next. Uh oh. She she uh oh. She she fumbled it. She at the fumbled end. a little. 47 oh that's pretty big <laughs> yeah i what? i never I, giggling <laughs> <laughs> we Look, need to forget that one Vertimalia is always just a hope and a prayer i feel like <laughs> oh oh this is good this is good uh yeah yeah Ooh. okay i think we got this i think we got this i think we might got this yes done yeah, we won! We beat Tangent! Ha! Take that, Tangent, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, you do an egg drop experiment, taking fragile crystalline glass fruit and designing four different ways to protect them from breaking after a long fall. Two break, but two succeed. Your experiment is only a simple demonstration of physics, but the judges decide to award you for choosing something within your capabilities and doing it well. <laughs> Tang is frustrated, but more at herself than you. She's not used to failure. We got popular, uh, and we also got the science fair champion. Can I see card? It's what the is one it? to the right. Yeah, can you, like, you clicked on it. It got a little bit bigger, didn't it? No. Or no? Oh, it just it showed us that when it yeah. came on. Oh, cute! Yay, we won the science fair. After the festi- after the festivities, t- uh, you take time off for uh. Bleh. Let's start over. After the festivities, you take time off for a much a much needed relaxing break. I keep wanting to say munch. munch. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I even almost said it there too. <laughs> like munch on some food uh your dad sets up a slip and slide through the colony square and everyone takes turns sliding on their stomachs and spraying water at each other it's a lot of fun you can feel your worries floating away in the hot dust suns we we have right we have fun here we do mid dust even though this planet is voraciously trying to eject us off yeah but sometimes we hang out with friends and have a good time yeah sometimes we play with a slip and slide a little column a a little column b yeah my dads are so, so uncool, Mars complains. Mars, do your homework. Mars, you should help out more. Mars, we're going to cut off your allowance, she scoffs. As if, right? That money is mine. I earn it. Uh, with a toss of her hair over her shoulder, she seems, ab- oh, she seems above it all entirely. Doing what? Do you even have to ask? My presence enlivens this dreary colony. I'm their beloved daughter. They owe me. Okay. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, All right. We are fully refreshed because not only our rest, but also Vertimnalia. Um, Do you want... What do you want to do? Oh, man. I kind of want to go exploring. Okay. Let's go. Let's do it. I I realize exploring. that's gonna probably up our red and blue skills, but that's okay. We do need to up our yellow skills a little bit more. Do we have a boost to yellow right now? Uh, Is that what that means on the left hand side at the let top? Let me let me check. Um, sorry. E e popular. 
kudos doubled. Kudos doubled for three months. Yep. Okay. I guess we can get kudos while we're out in the field, right? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go sneak out. Why not? Okay. I'm down. Uh, have we been out at this time of year? Probably. Well, the year also reset, so everything's um, everything's refreshed. Right. I mean, have we been out during dust before? Oh, no, I don't think we have. Um, oh, the muck hides interesting bugs and other treasure for those willing to put their hand down the right holes. Are you? Mm, peek inside that hole. Hmm, looks dark. Perception? Yeah, we got we it. 20? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, you've stuck your hands down enough holes to know this one's probably safe. You can't hear anything rustling around in there. Uh, Put your hand in there. Sure. Uh, there you go. Kudos. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Sweet. Literally. The hole is full of sugar bugs. These palm-sized balls of squish exude a sweet syrup when you tickle them. Ugh. Okay. Uh, you fill a bottle with it and then let them go again. Uh, should be worth a few kudos to antecedents in the kitchen. Antecedent in the kitchen. Awesome. So a bunch of kudos and Neat. some food for the colony. Cool. All right. Neat. All right. Let's keep exploring. We're going to get stressed out. Ooh, and I'm there's... actually going to go ahead and do the, the pass through before I do the ones over there. Okay. Uh, you leave the path and sneak through a, a strand of mush trees to one of the little sawmills dotting this area. It's a, sm it's a small but busy operation. Three people feeding mush tree logs into some kind of machine while a fourth one directs a four-legged robot with a plasma saw mounted on the front. Stay and watch what they're doing? Stay and watch what they're doing. Yeah. You stay out of sight and watch how they do it. When one tree crashes down, it almost seems like the others are wincing. It's probably just your imagination, though. Oh, maybe the, this planet really doesn't like it when we chop down all its trees because it has a shared nervous system or some shit. I keep going to Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is like, this is Pandora for some That's reason. That's fair. Yeah. Um, they aren't planting new ones or leaving any behind. You know the mush trees regrow every year, but you... But can they still regrow when you cut down everything like this? Yeah, we are kind of clear cutting, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to see this perception. Um, even the smaller trees and bushes are getting ground up for mulch with uh, with a scary big grinder that sounds like a roaring beast. The entire process makes you uneasy, but also proud of how industrious your colony is. Okay. Okay. We did get a card out of that. Ooh, a mushroom oh, dog. <gasps> this. Let's talk to him. Um... The second sun is beginning to set, and you're planning your route back to the gates when you spot Dis in the distance. He waves at you. Hi, Roscoe, he says gloomily. Uh, he sighs. Uh, I wish we didn't have to go home. I wish we could stay out here forever. Yeah, me too. I would miss my parents. I would be way too scared. Um, I would miss my parents. Say that. I don't know what he'll say to that. What if... He begins... What if we didn't go home? Today, I mean. What if we stayed out and camped overnight? He gestures to the pack on his back. I brought a tent, just in case. And a perimeter sensor. And I found a spot near the depot that looks safe. Yes, camp out, camp out. Okay, I guess. No way, we'd get in trouble. No way, that'd be too dangerous. I'm so... Oh. Well... I guess we could. What's going to happen? Are we going to get in trouble? I think we should. Oh, God. What if we die? We're not going to die. Let's camp out. Okay. Let's do it. Ooh. Oh, do we get bravery? Uh, no. We got rebelliousness. Oh, rebelliousness. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dis sets up the tent while you place the perimeter posts around the, uh, the edge of the clearing. If anything trips this invisible wall around your campsite, at least you'll know about it. Are our parents going to notice that we didn't come home? Are, they're gonna be mad at us, right? Oh my god! I mean, they you... might think we're crashing in the crash. Yeah, maybe. Can you tell that I was not a rebellious child? I can. Like, I can all? tell that pretty definitively. <laughs> can you tell that I was the firstborn child, and there was so much on my shoulders, and I was so afraid to disappoint my parents? Is that revealing too much? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, without even saying goodnight, Dis crawls into the tent, takes off his jacket, and stuffs it behind his head, then curls up into a ball facing the wall. He s falls asleep almost immediately. You crawl in beside him and pull a thermal blanket over yourself. You're exhausted from a long day of hiking in the, ju in the jungle, so despite the excitement of being out in the wild at night, you quickly fall asleep as well. You both wake to a blaring alarm and bright lights filling the campsite. It's the perimeter alert! 
Something must have triggered it. Dis, sit, uh, Dis sits bolt upright and looks at you with wide eyes. Should you go out there and check? Let's go oh. check. Yeah, let's go do it. We're brave. Can we do this? It's... I'm rooms? gonna... I'm gonna get rid of these red ones to start off sure. with. Just... See what we can work yeah, with? Yeah, that was the right call. That's better. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got this. Yeah, I'm gonna not use the... the kudos one that I am I think that's do. smart. Nope, I meant not to do that. I meant uh. to do that. Um, yeah. Oh, there you go. It's fine. I've, it's we've great. got the super goal. <laughs> yeah, we're well beyond. Yes, without the, yes. Cool. You both carefully open the door and peek out through a crack. Nothing. Whatever it was, the lights and noise must have scared it off. The sun is almost up. And you are definitely not getting back to sleep after that. So the two of you eat soy rations and quietly watch the sunrise over the jungle together. Aw. When the surveyors, oh, look at this thing. This like, uh, this vehicle here. And like a bus stop? That's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. I, I think I know it's to probably get into the surveyor thing. When the surveyors open the gates to start prepping for the day, you pack up your gear and go home. You expect the worst, but nobody even noticed you were gone. You left the privacy curtain on your bed closed, and your parents must have come in late and left early, thinking you were asleep there the whole time. You're lucky, but it also makes you feel a little sad. Yeah. It is sad. It we is also need sad. to learn to stop interacting with the yellow one, um, because it sends us home. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, but that's fine. We, we were... still got we got a, a bunch out of that regardless. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was good. Um, uh, all right. It's now late dust. Yes. How about we check around see if oh yes. uh, we got a ton of friendship with this there so i was like maybe maybe we've advanced maybe we around got something. here we go yeah this is sitting in the bed of one of the expedition vehicles tinkering with a bit of tech he tries to hide it when he sees you but it's in so many pieces that he only manages to shove some behind him before he gives up and glares at you mistrustfully what do you want what are you doing let me see what you have try to snatch one of the pieces from him what are you doing uh this squints at you Promise you won't tell on me, he says. Promise. Tell me or I'll get you in trouble. Promise. We're friends. They weren't using it, he states, already sounding defensive as he turns the biggest piece of the device over in his hands. It, it was just sitting there in command, so when they weren't looking, I took it. I took it and no one noticed. He seems excited about this fact. I think it's part of a communication device, he says thoughtfully. So I'm trying to figure out how it works. I want to talk to the aliens. Oh, so he's team aliens. Oh, yeah. I mean, we kind of knew that. He wants to go out into the jungle and assimilate. Like, Well, but I mean, if he's talking to aliens over the radio, that's more like what Mars was talking about. Oh, team intelligent aliens yeah. is what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's no such thing as aliens. You shouldn't do that. I'm telling you. Uh, I'm telling uh, wait, what if you tried this? Ooh, we got engineering. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Dis watches you intently as you uh, reassemble the pieces of the communication device. You hand it back to him and he flicks it open. Oh, and he flicks it on and it crackles to life with a roar of static. Dis almost drops it in shock. Oh. Ford. K go. Out. How many? K four. Over. Huh. Uh, Dis looks at you with wide eyes. He's smiling? The expression looks weird on his face, almost manic. Did you hear that? He says, practically vibrating with excitement. Those were words, I swear! Aliens are real! They're out there! It's just a bit of radio chatter from command. Yeah, probably. Uh, I think we should say yeah, probably. Even though it is probably just, like, radio chatter from command. <laughs> Just holds the device to his chest and strokes it. I knew it, he whispered. I knew it. People on Earth used to use stuff like this, thinking that it could pick up other the voices of ghosts, Dis says. But it was probably just radio waves. So I figure if I'm looking for radio waves, aliens have to exist, he continues quietly but with great conviction. They have to. You can't have this much life on a planet without some of it being smart like we are. He sighs. I just want to talk to them, he says. Maybe I'd fit in more with aliens than I do here. 
You should make some real friends. Well, you really don't fit in here. Anything's possible. Hmm. I mean, I wish we could be like, but we're your friend. We hang out with us. I'd love something like that. I don't like the middle one. Um, anything is possible. <laughs> that feels like the cop-out <laughs> answer. But I also don't want to, like, rain on Dis's parade right now. That's fair. I don't this know. is a big moment for him. He's like, yeah. Um, Dis nods and looks outward into the mushroom forest. I know you're just trying to be nice, he says quietly. Even if you think we're really alone out here and you're just lying to make me feel better it's still nice see he got the message he got that it, we're his friend yeah talk can you talk to mars mm -hmm. uh, there's probably nothing we can do with mars right now but um oh it's the same thing yep okay wait wait go back to mars again i think we can do some no we can give her oh, stuff we can't tell her about our our yeah. day yet i mean i can check in with everyone to see if we're we're there with anyone yeah we are with tang for instance oh do i don't do playing tang says watching anemone and some of the smaller children tear through the colony chasing after a sports ball why would i put effort into chasing around a dumb ball getting sweaty and tired for fun she shudders i would rather spend my time doing something important want to study together Let's study yeah Ooh, a three hooked on your hollow palm. Oh, you and Tangent sa uh, sink your hollow palms and play a game together uh, where you race to assemble chemical compounds using a simple programming language. Tangent is a whiz at it and breezes through the levels, barely breaking a sweat. You can tell she's hiding a smile when she looks over your shoulder to help you with a particularly tricky algorithm. Oh, yeah. Nice. Friends. Friends. Uh, this is toughness, so no, definitely not. What about Cal? Cal is animals, I think. No, Cal is biology. Biology. Okay. We need biology. We're 40. getting up there. You're animals. Yeah. Which we can't Help do. And animals. she's organization, I think. Yep. Um, okay. Well, uh, and then what does what does Mars need to tell her about our day and stuff? To do stuff with her? Um, persuasion. Persuasion. Can we work on getting our persuasion up? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Mm. Persuasion. I think we have to do errands. Is that right? Work in the depot? Uh, it's perception. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Let's do it. Organizing do it. and persuasion. Okay. Mars has asked you to recruit some new members for the Secret Fun Times Club. Uh, who do you approach about this fun, exciting opportunity to make friends and be your own boss? An enemy? Dis? Cal? My dad? <laughs> My dad? Cal! Uh, yeah. Cal? Yeah, let's do Cal. Uh, duh, it's Cal. Cal listens patiently while you explain the rules of the club. Hmm, he says when you get to the part about the pledge you have to say to join. I don't know if I want to say, like, humans are the best, he continues. What if we changed it so it's more ambiguous? Like, humans are really cool? I mean, humans are great, but animals are good, too. <laughs> I love how you said ambiguous. That ambiguous. was really cute. Ambiguous. It takes some uh, politicking, but you think you can convince Mars. Oh, one more thing, Cal says. What about Anemone? She's really cool, too. If I'm in the club, she should defo be in the club, too. It's hard to argue with that. Looks like you got a two for one. And then yeah. me and Cal are both at the next meeting and very excited to be part of the group. Mars looks excited to have more people to boss around. Um, and then me can be vice president of kicking stuff, Mars announces. You know, for if we need extra security or like if we need to open the door and can't use our hands. Uh, Cal will be vice president of transportation, Mars continues. Cal pulls out his hoverboard and grins. That'll be useful if we need to get somewhere fast, or uh, one of us, only one of us does anyway. He can deliver secret messages, too. Mars makes them raise their hands. Do you promise to always be cool kids and do fun stuff together and never tell any adults about the secret fun times club? Cal and Anemone agree readily. Yeah. Woo! Go Secret Fun Times Club. Secret Fun Times Club, go! We love the Secret Fun Times Club. <laughs> I do love the Secret Fun Times Club. I just <laughs> realized I made a mistake. Because <laughs> we want to do one, two. Oh, wait. Hmm. 
<laughs> huh? I, I didn't watch what you did, so. I just. That's, what? oh, this is, th it's the one. Ah, I hate this card. <laughs> I hate this card. Set specifically. to value one. Ugh, well, why, why does it work for that? It does. I, I, because I would have had a, a, a zero, one, two, three, four straight. Oh, it doesn't matter. Damn. I still won. I'm just petty. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. I was like, what are you getting upset about? It's kind of good. <laughs> it, it, it is, but it would have been better if, gotcha. it was a, if it was a nice big straight. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> Incredible. Actually, while we're if we're still popular, we might want to do that again because that gave us a ton of kudos. That gave us like twenty kudos. Yeah, it gave us a lot of kudos. <laughs> That's fine with me. Bobber fruit. Ooh, yeah. Um. Sure. We could do that. Um. I'm always for that, and it's getting our uh, persuasion up, right? It's getting up our persuasion. Uh. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's, it's um, organizing is the big one that gets the big bump, but it will give us two persuasion, which is good. It's giving us two for both. It is, but the top one gets a bump if you if you um, over accomplish. So that one will go to four, and then persuasion will stay at two. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. The top one is always the one that can get cranked all the way up. Gotcha. The bottom one is just like a bonus. Okay. But still. I think we could still do it again. Yeah. Mars insists on being the one who talks to people and takes requisitions while you work hidden in the back, loading packages onto the conveyor belt. Mars is counting her kudos tips for the week. Mars hoots, woo, 10 kudos. I'm gonna buy so many sour sticks with all these tips. It's not fair. You're the one running around in the back doing all the heavy lifting while she gets all the credit and kudos. You want those kudos because you're, you're saving, saving up for something. Ooh. You want to be rich one day, and it's just the principle of the thing. I don't know what we're saving up for, but I want to say that I feel like we're saving up for something. Yeah. Mars sees you barely. Oh. Mars sees your barely controlled anger and can't help but rub it in. What? She says innocently. Are you jealous? Lose your temper is bravery. Convince her to split tips is persuasion. Uh, and this one would be bigger persuasion, but we oh. don't have it, so. Uh, convince her to split tips. Let's see if we can do that. You swallow your anger and calm yourself. You tell her you're fine with working in the back, but you should split the tips 50-50 between you. Mars agrees. It's just natural, she says. I'm better at talking to people, and you're better at finding things in that big old mess of a warehouse. We make a good team. Yeah, she likes when people talk back to her. She does. Yeah. <laughs> that that is honestly like the big thing with her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she wants so she wants to boss people around, but she also wants someone to tell her to stop bossing people yep. around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh Mars, I love her so much. She, I I adore her. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I just okay. love that it would be so easy for her to not be that, but instead she's fun yeah. and like kind of delightful. Agreed. Um, okay, I am gonna actually check. We have 160 kudos, so it's worth checking in to see what we can we can buy. Yeah, let's do it. Because uh, we haven't done that in a while. Let's view the supply depot. So we can cake. get a cake for 50. We can get uh, plus five to animals, plus one to all flushes, plus five to persuasion, plus one to all bonus pairs. Uh, plus five to biology, plus one to, uh, bonus on straights, and plus one to all yellow cards is the photo honor. Oh, um, anything you're we feeling? We actually might not. Wait, wait a sec. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. Blah. do the thing. Okay. What are you looking for? This. Oh. Oh, you'll keep adding to your deck as you age and can forget cards by spending time relaxing. You have a limited number of gear slots based on your organization and other skills. Click gear to equip and unequip it. Collectibles that you find while exploring may be given as gifts to friends or used during challenges for one use bonuses. Okay, so we have the sun medallion and we also have the toys. Yeah, this is what we got as a kid and it's plus one to all challenges, mm -hmm. which is nice, but I am gonna actually swap that out for the toys Unifauna, which we got uh, from our parents. Yeah, for our birthday. Yeah. Um, okay. We, it would be great if we had other slots, but we don't because we don't, we're not good enough yet. That's fair. In which case it probably, unless we wanna buy like cake to give to people on their birthday or something, um, I don't know if it makes sense to spend kudos yet because we can't mm. equip them anyway. Okay. I mean, getting cake to give to people on their birthday is kind of fun, though. Um, what are our friendships looking like? Um, let's see. Whose birthdays do we know? I think we know this is as late wet. Is that right now? No. It's mid wet. It's month two of wet. Do we know Mars? And if this is as late wet, then tangents will be two. Um, right. Because they're tw are they twins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
I don't, uh, do we know Mars is? Yes, early wet. Oh, we missed it. Damn it. All right. That's a I kind of want to give her cake next time. Okay. Is that cool? Absolutely. Yeah. I it, I would have if we didn't miss her birthday. Cool. I also just, I, I don't know. I feel like that would make her so happy. I feel like she'd really like cake. I think, I think she'd birthday. also just love people remembering her birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fair and valid. Well, yeah. If you buy the cake now, can we hold on to it until her birthday? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to have a year old cake, but that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Woo. Okay. Cake acquired. Yes. Okay. What do you want to do? Uh, good question. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Maybe we should up our combat a little bit more. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? Um, if we get a little more biology, I think either biology or bravery, we're going to hit that middle thing. Like the, the thing. Ooh, let's do biology then. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think, I think it would be good to, to kick those over. That's a good idea. Um, okay. Life, Life sciences. sciences. You should have known better, Tangent. You hear as you walk past the laboratory. Curious, you listen at the door. Chief Engineer Instance sighs. I know you meant well, but your presumption has cost us three months of work. Uh-oh. You can't simply look at an experiment and change the parameters to your liking. Getting results is not the same as doing good science. Your findings, however, scientifically interesting. Your findings, however, scientifically interesting, are useless to us without sound methodological underpinnings. I mean, oh, wow. Tang's response is more subdued than you've ever heard her before. I'm sorry, Chief Engineer. She mumbles, looking down at the floor. I recognize the error of my ways. I should hope so. Instance replies, pinching the bridge of her nose in her fingers. I'll expect you in the lab first thing tomorrow morning, and I will personally supervise your work in resetting the experiment. Oh, no. Uh-oh. She tried to rush through something. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl. Also, one, you shouldn't do that. But two, I'm sorry. But, ugh, you made a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, ugh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, you flatten against the wall as Instance breezes past you, barely giving you a second look as she strides down the hallway. You poke your head inside the laboratory where Tang scowls and wipes her eyes. What do you want? What are you working on? Cheer up. It could be worse. We don't have the empathy, empathy for that. Our empathy is so low. Uh, it'll be better the second time around is our we can use reasoning. I like the reasoning response. Yeah. Oh. Tang nods. You're right. The first experiment was plagued by inefficiencies. She says, pushing herself off the lab bench. That's why I changed it in the first place. In the new experiment, I can eliminate those inefficiencies from the start. Thank you, Roscoe. You may have saved me. You may have saved me three months of work. Aww. Helps tangent. Cool. Losing the data was my fault. Tang continues. I wanted to prove I'm not the little kid from the biology class, that I'm ready to work hard and really make a good, uh, great discoveries. Dr. Instance has always been there for me. When I was a kid, and now, with my mother gone... She's the only adult in the colony who sees what I can become, she says. She believes that I can be better than what I am. It's always been that way. I just really want to impress her. Her mother's gone? Mm -hmm. We didn't know that. When did that happen? Not since we've been here, no. right? Uh, I guess since maybe, I don't know. I mean, it must have been on the stratosphere. On the stratosphere yeah. that she passed away. Yeah. Oh. Um, you will. Don't push yourself too hard. You will. Mm. Uh, Tang hums in agreement. I certainly hope so. Oh. Oh, Tang. Oh. Guess we're becoming kind of close with her, too. Both both the twins. And... <laughs> <laughs> well. It is what it is. <laughs> it got us, got us through the night. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, we are. We're definitely the, the the twins and Mars seem to be our 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 crew yeah. and Cal and, and Cal. Cal. Those are sorry, those, an enemy. <laughs> the twins, Mars and Cal. Are, yeah, and Cal are the are my faves so far. Yeah, sorry, enemy. I'm really <laughs> sorry. Uh, Tangent is deep in conversation with one of the other scientists. He seems to be consoling her, though Tangent's face betrays no emotion as he claps her on the shoulder and reassures her that she's doing a really well for someone so young and that everyone compromised some of their samples when they were first learning. Uh, he leaves and Tangent sighs as she goes to put her head in her hands, stopping short when she realizes she's still wearing gloves. She peels them off and digs her fingers into her eyes. 
You okay, Tangent? What's up, Tang? Are you okay, Tangent? I'm fine. Tangent replies immediately. I compromised an experiment I was working on because the vent was still open when I was spraying the workstation down with a sanitizer. She sniffs. It's so gross in here. She says. I probably did that fungus a favor. Tangent takes a bottle of sanitizer from under her workbench and cleans while she speaks. There are pollen spores everywhere. She whines. And he comes over here and tells me it'll be okay, Tang. Like it's his job to console and patronize me. I hate being patronized too. What's wrong with him being nice? But it is okay to make mistakes. I don't want to... Uh, top one. I hate being patronized too. Yeah, we're rebellious. You both sigh in unison. I hate being young. She says bitterly. Why don't they understand that we have higher expectations of ourselves than they do? I need to learn from my own failures. What I don't need, she continues, is icily. Someone to, yeah, sorry, sorry. Is someone to pat me on the head and tell me it's okay that the adults will make it all better. I messed up, she says. Just let me fix it. Don't make a big deal about it like I'm a child with a boo-boo. Fair enough. Yeah. We weren't there to console her, I felt like. Native well, botany. Unlock xenobotany research in geoponics. Ooh, that's cool. Let's go check that out. Whatever that is. Um, oh, wait, it's late wet. Do we want to give either tangent or dis a cake? <gasps> oh. Or both. I can go buy another cake. And you, then I can also buy one from Mars. I was going to say, you can buy th we I can, can buy two cakes. more cakes. Yes, I do can it, buy. Do okay. It, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cakes around. Here Cake, we go. Cakes all I around. didn't mean to talk to you, Mars. <laughs> right, I thought it. I thought the cake. Oh, there's. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Cakes for everybody. Cake. 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 Okay. Yeah. No cakes. cake. No cake for Cal, though. No cake for Cal. <laughs> we need to figure out when Cal's birthday is. Give it to Dis first, because we know Dis's birthday is definitely late wet, right? Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Just to be safe. Dis is scrolling through a novel on his hollow palm, completely checked out of the world around him. He startles when you tap his shoulder. I'm actually, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm gonna save us from this. I think Dis doesn't like cake. Oh. Um. All right, then Cal so gets cake. We let's give him something. Let's it's his give birthday. him like a give like him a, the egg. It's a Zeno egg. Yeah. Let's give him a Zeno egg. Okay. Here you go. Um, Dis blinks owlishly at your gift. It is it my birthday? I almost forgot. I hate it when people make a big deal about my birthday, but it is nice. Um, thank you. Okay. Sorry. Oh. I just, I, I, I just remembered and was like, no. Um, yep. Hopefully, I, I have no idea if Tangent likes cake. Well, so here we go. Well, let's give her a cake and see what she thinks. Um, oh, there you go. You remembered my birthday. She says, taking the cake and immediately setting it down on a side counter far away from any specimens. I don't eat desserts, but... It's the thought that counts. Okay, neither okay. of them like cake. They don't like cake, but she's happy it was her birthday. Yes. Okay. Okay. We can't give it to Mars yet because Mars is... I mean, we can give it to Mars, but it, it won't get the birthday bonus. We'll stay. We'll wait for I also birthday. think we can go ahead and guess that Cal's birthday isn't also going to be late late wet. Right? Right. It's probably okay. not late wet. It's probably not late wet. Okay, let's see what we unlocked. Okay, cool. Geoponics, explore the xenobiology lab. Xeobotany lab, sorry. Hey, kiddo. Your dad says, looking up from his work desk where he's dissecting a huge bell-shaped flower. Can you hand me that separator? I've really got my hands uh, in things here. Um, you hand him the tool, which he uses to wedge open some sort of weird stoma-like opening inside the bell. Gooey purple ector, oo nectar oozes out and pools on the desk. Whoa. He exclaims. I thought I'd drain this little beauty. Can you, uh, can you get me a towel, I guess? Ugh. Uh, you help him mop up the flower juice. Yuck! It's sticky and smells like rotting vegetables. When you're done, he looks at you with pride. You know, I've been thinking of getting one of you kids to come help me out with researching the native plants. He says. You think you might be able to break off some time to help your old man in the lab? I know you've been studying biology. He adds. It's not as glamorous as genetic research with instance, but it is important. Cool. He grins. Let me talk to your mom about it tonight before we uh, you go telling her. She's not a fan of alien plants, you know. If it were up to her, we'd fill this greenhouse with earth plants and nothing else. But there's got to be more to this planet that we can cultivate. 
If you find any cool plants while you're exploring, bring them here and we can take a look at them. Oh, cool. All right. We might have some, actually. Um, that also does that lock it off? teaches two biology, two organizing, and friendship with cow, if we want to do that. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your dad introduces you to the little lab they have set up in one of the greenhouses. It's incredible. He says, gesturing all around him. We're surrounded by alien flora, and we know practically nothing about it. What's edible? What's medicine? What can we make fibers out of and build with and use in ways that we haven't thought of yet? He beams at you. You and me. We're going to find out, my little potato. Oh. Your dad directs you to, re to a research bench. And here's where you'll be working. The bench is buried under samples and beakers and weird-looking alien sprouts. More than just a simple table, the analysis bench is covered with buttons and little holes you could put st put things into. Don't touch anything. Carefully find the on switch. Stick something in a hole. Press buttons at random. <laughs> Carefully find the on switch. There There's is no on switch. <laughs> oh, there is no on switch. Yep, you looked everywhere. Don't touch anything. Um... Oh. Go ahead and mess around. Your dad encourages you. You won't break anything. Press buttons at random. <laughs> you mash all the button, the table's buttons until... Um, yo, 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 kiddo. It's congruence. <laughs> She's so hip and fresh. <laughs> the friendly ship's computer beams at you from her own hollow screen set into the bench. Of course she's here. She's the guardian of all knowledge in the colony, after all. You wonder where she got the yo-yo-yo from. Your dad laughs. Don't tell anyone, but congruence is the real brains of the operation. Uh, he confesses, though it's not like it's a secret. She'll make sure we don't do anything super dangerous. Which means you and I get to focus on experimentation. If you follow the rules and stick to what you already know, you won't learn anything new. So don't be afraid to try stuff. Oh, cool. Okay. You bring your mushwood samples into the lab. You're going to study these and revolutionize the use of mushwood lumber. Maybe. Let's study yeah. this mushwood. Oh. Oh, we lost the card. Okay. Is that what happens? Basically, we, we lost the collectible mushwood log in exchange for a card uh, harvesting gotta, mushwood. Uh, this memory card. Yeah. Okay. You examine the mushwood under a microscope and take notes on its cellular structure. Part of the reason it needs to be harvested in wet is because the cells get so saturated that they lose structural integrity and turn, well, mush during glow. Makes sense. Um, studying right, we got biology cool. makes sense. Studying the exact process by which the cell by which the cells take in water leads to a break. Oh wait, wait, studying the exact process by which the cells take in water leads to a breakthrough. It might be possible to hack the process to hack the process and stop the mushwood trees from taking on too much water during wet. If they don't take on as much water, they won't take as long to dry. You should be able to develop a spray that the loggers can apply to the fruiting body of the mushwood, the part that sticks ab out above the ground, to close its pores. Reducing negative pressure in the body should stop it from pulling so much water from the mycelial network underground. This is great! Logging will be much more efficient now. Oh. We got kudos and... Colony defenses. Yep. Okay, cool. Awesome. We are going to cut down more trees well that allows us to cut down less actually it? that's fair yeah yeah we don't because if we keep harvesting because they're they're difficult to harvest because they turn mushy <laughs> um, check that out hell yeah <laughs> sorry 27 yeah because i got a one two three four five. Oh my god yeah. yes Woo! all right look how well we did and it's glow time. And it's time for glow. It's glow time. <laughs> <laughs> it's glow time. Oh, there's a there's a crystally thing there. There is. Uh, did you get it? Okay. Yep. All right. I don't know what we could else out, do. Or is it just us? We might want to sleep. Anemone is out. Oh, we're a little stressed, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can chat with distant and enemy, and then I'd recommend we sleep. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. You find dis illuminated only by the glow of his hollow screen. It's easier to read when it's dark, he exclaims. There's less glare. This is the best season. And Anemone. It's probably like, it's too dark to play. I don't know. You approach Anemone just as she's about to bite into a sandwich the size of her head. Mom says I'm about to hit a growth spurt. She says, chewing on her mouth, chewing with her mouth open. <laughs> she says I got a hollow leg. <laughs> she's going to get so tall. Uh, sleep on the um, walls or sleep in the crash? Oh, 
Ooh, go up to the walls. Okay. Um, see if we can. Yeah, if we're we allowed. Can. Let's do it. The view from the wall during glow is absolutely breathtaking. The wormhole seems to smother the sky like a swirling jewel-toned to bowl pressing down on the gloom. Everything in the wilderness is lit up and seems to breathe in and out with the planet like one living creature made of stars. It's beautiful. You could almost forget how dangerous it is. Nice. Took the limp off. Excellent. I can for forget, forget giggling. Forget to baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yay. Two data, uh, two data points form a line, but three is a pattern. The colony has been on high alert, all glow, hoping that the creatures from beyond the wall don't return for a third year in a row. Surveyors keep reporting that they're seeing unusual animal activity. Even the plants seem different, they say, and new tracks that must have been left by creatures larger and heavier than you've ever seen. You and the other colonists drill evacuation plans. Ah, oh, there it is. Ah, oh, shit. You're in engineering when you hear the sirens ring through the colony. You cover your ears against the noise and make your way to the nearby classroom. This is one of the assembly points, so you should be safe there, but it wasn't so safe last year for Professor Hal. What if another creature gets in? Congruence, the new teacher, is just a face on a computer screen. She can't protect anyone. Congruence flickers cheerfully. cheerfully. Please stay calm, children, she says. The defense squad is already en route to the creatures. This should be all over soon. Uh, you've been told this before. As the sirens continue, you're faced with a choice. Stay put. Leave. We always go out. Let's go. Yeah. You stand up and leave. Tang and Mar stare at you like you have three heads. Congruence doesn't try to stop you. Not that she could. She doesn't have any hands. You, you slow to Heroic. a walk. Oh, what? We got the status heroic. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, is that because we upped our bravery? I think it's just because we're facing our ah, fears here. That's cool. You slow to a walk as you near the outer doors of engineering. Something doesn't feel right. You stop to listen in the dim emergency lighting and hear the metallic popping of something overhead. In the ventilation ducts? Your blood gets cold. Monsters, they're here. You follow the sound to a workshop and force yourself to look through the slats of the vent. You gasp. Two glistening, bug-like eyes peer down at you. No, four? Six? They blink in syncopated pairs. Then you hear it over the sirens, a soft pinging noise, halfway between a chirp and a purr. The creature skitters, spider-like, from one side of the vent to the other. A small, furry tentacle slithers through the slats, searching for the vent release. When it can't find the when it can't find one, it bangs its body against the inside of the vent, denting the metal. Attack it, try to scare it away, tame it, help it escape. Tame it? We have animals. Oh, try it. Okay, let's do this thing. We're gonna do some animal taming during the time when all the yeah. animals are losing it. That is correct. Uh, okay. Forty? Yep, we're uh -oh. we're going for it. Becoming a carnivore. Okay, we can do this. We can oh, do this. Wait, we what was this. what? Ugh. I know I'm not gonna be able to see it. What was? Can you pull them back or no? Ah, there we go. That's what it is. It turns them red. Okay, that's okay, good. That's good. We want that. Mm -hmm. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Okay. Uh, card becomes physical. Okay, we have another red card in there. Um, oh, I don't like that there's a one. I mean, I guess we could do three, 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 four. Three, three, turn one, three into a red and four. Is that anything? Um, I mean, we're probably going to want to do three... Except this is going to be four because this is a, this is a, so we're actually going to want to do this. Ooh. This. Uh, oh. Eh, leave, leave, go back to the cards. Thank you. Jeez. <laughs> hmm. Well, we can at least do this. I wish there was three, four. Oh, this is six though now, so that doesn't even matter. So we're yeah. we're gonna do it the smart way, which is this. Uh, ba ba ba. That is, is this one naturally? Yeah, there we go. Which is this? Um. Okay. Because it's now it's now a a three red card. Um. Three flush. Red, yeah. yeah. I think it was still twenty one either way, but that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. We're gonna hit it. We're gonna it do it. Doesn't matter. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, I guess you can use that one, but... Or you could just do... Yeah. There cool. we go. And the pink candy. Mm -hmm. All right. Yay. Okay. Point being, we got it. We I mean, we got plus to animals. Oh, it's so cute. It's made of mushrooms and it's got tentacles. Oh, it's, it's like a little. A ricky. It's like a little spider. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's a ricky. Um, you win it over by reading its body language and slowly building trust. It seems to want to join you, and you think, hope, you'll be allowed to keep it. Oh. You look, uh, you look the species up on your holopom and learn that Vriki, so named for the trills they make, which yours is making now, cuddling against your leg, are neither male nor female, though they do require a mate to reproduce. So it's a they then. You decide to name them Vriki, Riki Tiki, Bright Eyes, Squidly Fetterson, and something <laughs> else. <laughs> Uh, I like Squiddly Fetterson. Squiddly, Squiddly Feederson. Squiddly Feederson it is. We're going to call it Feederson for short, I feel like. Squiddly Feederson. Uh, they blink every one of their beady black eyes up at you, none of them in unison. They seem to have no problem with this name. It isn't long before the sirens turn off, ringing three short pulses at the all clear message. As the all clear message flashes on your holopalm, you and the other children file out of engineering and you head back to your quarters. Your parents will want to know that you're safe. You manage to smuggle your new pet Vriki under your jacket and hide it and hide it under your bed before they arrive. We just fucking like have a, a hidden we have alien. A we yes. have a pet. We have, alien we have a pet alien now. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> but also, Peterson. <laughs> oh, Peterson. Uh, your dad gives you a big hug, but your mom slumps into a seat at your small table. It's like they were going specifically for geoponics this time, she mutters, but your dad pets your hair and shushes her. Ooh. I'm sure it was just bad luck, Flulubel. I don't Y'all Oh my god, it's year three. I feel like <laughs> we we gotta be thinking a little more critically here. <laughs> I mean, maybe we are and we just don't know about it because we're twelve. So it's quite possible that there's discussions happening that we're not privy to. Well, cause like we didn't even know there was alien life until year end of year one when they were I like, Oh fair. yeah. Oh yeah, by the way. By the way, <laughs> we we've we've known, but you're yeah. a child. Interesting. Uh, he says, but your mom shakes her head and folds her hands in front of her mouth, staring out the porthole at the fields. Nobody died? Nobody died. Seems like nobody died. That's good. That's good. And pet acquired. So pet that, acquired. Nobody died. that's dead. about as well as, as, uh, quiet can go. Oh, there's our friend. Oh my God. Yep. Uh, does it just follow us around? Yeah, here's just, like, Peterson. Play your, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Peterson's just going to be with us now. We just have a friend. We just have a friend. Until it gets eaten. It's going to get eaten, I feel like. <laughs> Does, oh, oh, we're 13 now. Mm -hmm. It squeaks. It squeaks when I click on it. We are getting Squeak. a little taller, right? Are we getting a little taller? I don't think so. It's hard to tell. Oh, cute. We're 13. We are. Cal, look at our pet. I know we have to like, this is like the end though, but let's at least show, maybe we can show Cal our pet. Mm. I don't know. Uh, you catch Cal at the gate of the gardens. He's carrying a big bucket of rocks. Hi, Roscoe, he exclaims. He pauses to pat your pet on the head. And hello to you too, Squidly Peterson. Oh. Oh, I'm supposed to tell you there's a new park near Geoponics now, Cal says. We can run around all we want and nobody will say we're trampling the fields. You can come play there sometime. Oh, you should come play there sometime. And bring Squidly Peterson. They'll love it. Cool, we got Relax in the Park in Geoponics. Yep, you can like level up your pets there. Oh! cute wow very productive nobody's died um we made friends we're trying to figure out how to uh, i almost said defeat how to cure shimmer i mean <laughs> however you want to approach it <laughs> whether it's with fists or science we'll, we'll find science. a way yeah um i think next time we i don't know we have so many things we could do we can hang out with our pet we can uh grow and learn more it looks like we have a uh, boost to red right now or something uh um it is um all physical yeah plus skills? one to all physical skills oh it might be good to go outside then maybe. yeah honestly yeah. and we're fully rested that's fair that might be I a good approach you might want to go exploring outside beyond the walls next mm -hmm. time that might be a good idea oh look at our new little friend adorable so cute yeah wow <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, that sounds good. I think, yeah, next time we will go do some exploring, bring our pet with us. Hopefully they live. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Sounds like a plan. See you next time, folks. Bye. Bye.